The future of the security forces is only part of the discussion of what kind of Afghan state we can afford to leave behind. How democratic, how capable, how free of corruption, how national, how organized do Afghan institutions need to be to be able to provide the basic services and basic security. What is good enough, a word we have heard applied to the standard by which we might transition. At every turn, we have to ask what we can realistically accomplish in the next few years to build sufficient Afghan capacity and focus on those areas. Finally, as we did in Iraq, we need to determine how we can best support the political solution that everyone has agreed is ultimately uh, the only way to resolve the crisis of Afghanistan. Again and again and again, from General Petraeus, uh, through ambassadors and other uh, 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 military uh, leaders, from the Secretary of Defense, all have confirmed that there is no military solution. So looming large in front of us is the pregnant question, what is the political solution? I went to College of Engineering in Kabul University. I finished many years ago and then I came to the U.S. for a visit. But unfortunately what happened, the government in Afghanistan changed to a type of government which I did not subscribe to. I didn't like it. Didn't want to go back, stuck here. And I went to Tennessee State University, finished a master's degree. Once I finished my PhD at the University of Oklahoma, I applied for a teaching position to Texas A&M University in Kingsville. And I went there for three years, and it, I like to see four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and uh, winter. I applied and I ended up at the University of Hartford. So it's been many years that I've been teaching and living in this part of the country. I uh, traveled to Afghanistan in 2002 to do a water sector assessment for USAID at that time. When I reached Afghanistan, that was uh, one year after the overthrow of Taliban, I realized that the professional cadre has even left the country or they uh, they, they have been killed. So I, uh, being a civil engineering professor at the University of Hartford, thought that I can make a difference by uh, helping engineering education in Afghanistan. And in the process, I traveled to Herat, and I met a group of young professors there, and uh, I realized that if I can spend some time and effort with the enthusiasm that the faculty members at Herat University have, I can help them bring up the level of engineering education to those of the United States, if not fast enough, but maybe in the long run. So when I came back for the next five years, I publicized the, the need of engineering education in Afghanistan. When I brought this issue up with the administration of University of Hartford, the president of University of Hartford, President Harrison, was extremely supportive of the idea that we should go ahead with this initiative also the Dean of Engineering and other administration members at the University of Hartford. They were very supportive of us pursuing this project. And also during the course of this collaboration, anytime we needed something from the administration, they were very supportive to provide it. So Sally first approached me 
in the days just following the overthrow of the Afghan government and the establishment of the Karzai government. And he told me that he had been uh, to Herat and he saw a possibility for us to become involved with the Herat University College of Engineering. But it was still a very nascent idea. We, he wasn't certain what he was getting into, and I wasn't certain much. But I was very supportive of the idea. And in those days, I had to convince a lot of my colleagues at the university that this was worth looking at. People were petrified about the dangers in Afghanistan then. There were three things that uh, made me interested in this program. Knowing Saleh and having great confidence in him and understanding his position to be able to make this happen. Secondly, uh, I hope as a university we are always thinking about how we can make a critical difference in important parts of the world. And then third possibility, the, the other thing that interests me is that I knew we had a College of Engineering, Technology, and Architecture that could actually add to this effort. It's one thing to say, oh, we can do this. It's another to know that we have the resources to help make this possible. Finally, uh, in 2007, USAID and the World Bank showed an interest in supporting higher education, and that is how we got involved with Herat University one threshold really needs to be both stated and restated as we consider the options. And that is that it is fundamentally unsustainable to continue spending $10 billion a month on a massive military operation with no end in sight. The good news is I believe we don't have to. I'm convinced that we can achieve our core goals at a more sustainable cost in both lives and dollars and structure. I'm not sure that an Afghan security force of 350,000 people is sustainable uh, by either them or us. The estimates are that it would cost about 8 billion to 10 billion a year to sustain a force of that size after the transition of 2014. Even the most optimistic estimates are that the Afghan government's tax revenue will be around two billion. 2.5 billion at the tops. That's the total, my friends. So who will pay the bills to avoid having those armed soldiers and police mobilized as part of the next insurgency? Every endeavor that we undertake requires some funding, but there is little money needed for higher education as compared to any other area that we think. Military involvement or other type of involvement other than education it will be extremely expensive, but education doesn't require a lot of money. And yet the, the outcome of educating people will be felt for generations to come. I, I think there are two, two forces came together here. The first very important force is that the University of Hartford is well positioned to do just this sort of thing. This sort of educational component fits into what we do. And then um, secondly, of course, having a person who was born and raised in Afghanistan, who speaks the language, who understands the culture, who is trusted by people on all sides of this issue, is immeasurably important and wouldn't be possible without him. They were still chances sending our faculty over there in the early years to, to help uh, learn what was going on and to do the early training there. Um, but it all paid off because he knew what he was doing. He knew what parts of the country were safe and what weren't. Early years he took a couple of women faculty over there and there was some, un mis you know, some insecurity about how women would be treated in that society. He said, no, no, trust me, this will be great for them. They came back thrilled with the opportunity, and I can remember one of them uh, in the early years in engineering faculty member talking about how the women students in Herat had pulled her aside and asked her about fashion tips. Everything from how do you rebuild a computer network in a place that has nothing, nothing's happened in the past 10 or 12 years, to, well, what do women in America actually dress like? I mean, that's really cool. That's very, that's what getting people together on a human level is really about.
bringing their students here. They're, they called themselves the student professors. They're, they're faculty who wanted to get a master's degree to increase their expertise. In watching how our faculty worked with them and integrated them into our overall student body and gave them the opportunity to succeed academically. And that's what made this work. That's why I'm so proud of these people who have done this. Now for a second group that for me truly symbolizes the importance of learning in the world. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to recognize six individuals who today are receiving master's degrees in engineering. These six students are the first of a group who call themselves student professors from the College of Engineering at Herat University in Western Afghanistan. They have studied for the past two years at the University of Hartford thanks to generous grants from the World Bank. And most of all, thanks to the outstanding leadership of Professor Saleh Keshawars of our civil engineering faculty. Their education here at the University of Hartford is one aspect of an extensive partnership between our universities that Professor Kashawar, a native of Afghanistan, has designed. As you know, for 15 years or so, higher education was mostly banned in Afghanistan. Under the rule of the Mujahideen and the Taliban, universities were closed, education was discouraged. With the return to power of the democratic government of President Hamid Karzai, Afghanistan's universities were reopened. But in the intervening 15 years, much of the faculty and academic leadership had fled the country. Those who remained had not been able to keep up with the advances in learning in their fields. So this brave group of faculty traveled halfway around the world to pursue their education here at the university so they could return to Herat and build and rebuild their college and their university into a vital center of learning in Western Afghanistan. For me, they symbolize the power and attraction of education, the beacon of hope that education is to so many of our fellow human beings around the world. So I ask these six student professors from Afghanistan to stand so that we can, they can receive our warm applause for their dedication to learning and to rebuilding their country and improving the lives of their fellow citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask the uh, graduates from Afghanistan to stand and receive our applause. What they learn at the University of Hartford they're implementing it back in their own classroom teaching, research, and consulting. And they are very enthusiastic about what they have learned and what they are going to learn in the future. And through the effort that they made, perhaps uh, Herat University has one of the best engineering education program in the country at this time. It's a wonderful testament to the talent and the uh, energy of the people within Herat University, first of all. I have had the great good fortune now to meet everyone from the president of the university to the students who have come here to get master's degrees. And so I, I have seen in them a spirit of trying to work together to rebuild their university and to serve their country and their students in the world to educate the young minds to take the matter in their own hands. Because if you take an engineer from abroad to Afghanistan to do engineering work, he will be there for a very short period of time, and he may not have the motivation that an Afghan engineer has to serve his own country. So we have provided that opportunity for the Afghan engineers to be able to serve the country in a way that is sustainable in the long run. And they also educate the next generation that comes after them and the next and the next. I'm so proud of my colleagues on the faculty of the college 
who have done this. I mean, we, I can sit here as president and say, we have a mission, we do this or that. I never for a second fool myself to believe that that really is what makes the difference. What makes the difference is our faculty working with their faculty and students uh, to, to do the hard work that helps you achieve things. Our work in Afghanistan has a longevity that most other projects may not have. I want to use the opportunity to also say that in so many professors that came to University of Hartford for their master's degree, 17 altogether, three of them were female professor for the first time. And they came to the University of Hartford, they finished their master's degree, and they went back, and they are teaching now. And, and that they could be real role models for the rest of women faculty members in Herat universities. Uh, an old friend of mine um, used to say that um, technology is the only country in which students were the natives and the faculty were the tourists. The important thing to keep in mind from all this is that the younger generation, the students, know much more about this, feel much more comfortable with this means of learning and communicating than, than we do. Well, we are living in the era of internet, which makes distances very small. What we do in the United States, the Afghans will know it immediately, and what they do, we know it immediately. One of the big developments at Herat University is their reach to, to the internet through satellite connection that also have been helping them in their education. And what information technology does is it allows us to connect humans much more uh, quickly and efficiently and, frankly, randomly. It makes the traditional way of approaching things through through bureaucrats like me, uh, it doesn't it makes us superfluous. Let's set up a program. Let's set up an exchange. Let's uh, let's work on how we get people back and forth. Well, now we don't have to do that as much. Now, what we have to do is give them the wherewithal to do it themselves, and technology has provided them with the means to do that. When we go to Herat University, we see a vibrant student body. Herat University has opened doors for the public to come to the university and get the learning that is needed to live in 21st century. And it will serve as a focus for engineering education in Afghanistan. And soon they will be a, an engineering program that will be unique in the region, and they can compete with any university in the region. So from that point of view, what we have done for Herat University, with the help of you know, Herat University, of course, has been a tremendous success for both institution and the people who were involved in this project. I want to see the country peaceful. I want to see the people comfortable. I want to see people not being killed and blown away every day. I want a country in Afghanistan where the neighbors will live with the Afghans in peaceful coexistence and be happy. That's all I want to get out of the whole thing. I get emotional. That's okay. Go ahead. I I یعنی اگر فکر خود را در یک چیز معطوف کنین و برای از او زامت بکشین همیشه موفق بشین خصوصا در حصه تعلیمات عالی تعلیمات عالی رای نجات افغانستان است یگانه رای که ما میتونیم افغانستان نجات بتیم تعلیمات عالی است تعلیم و تربیه به صورت عموم و تعلیمات عالی به طور مشخص و کوشش کنین که هر کدامتان به قدر توان پشت تعلیمات عالی را بگیرین خدا موفق کنه ما و شما را کل ما تشکر The 
Education is the key for the success of every society.